Previously, on a tribute to Uncle Ben. Though only halfway complete, Spidey's ring has already transferred powers to SolidWorks users in the form of basic surfacing tools and some very unique sketch tools, such as Arc Slot and Split Entities. We're prepared for part three of our four-part series, where our infinity symbol will meet its completion with the use of more advanced surfacing features. Recall in part two of this series that we built the infinity reference surfaces in two S-shaped halves. We're now going to use each half to create a lofted surface and a separate boundary surface to give the impression that the infinity is overlapping itself. Let's start by creating the lofted surface. A loft can use any series of profile sketches connected to guide curves to create unique shapes. For this half of the infinity symbol, we're going to use three profile sketches and we'll use the edges of the extruded surface as our guide curves. Let's draw our two end profiles on the extrusion's planar face. We're going to draw an arc, ensuring the points of the arc are coincident with the S-shaped edges of the extrusion. And we will set the radius of this arc to 0 0.03 inches. I know that the opposite end of this S-shape is on the same plane, so I can just mirror this sketch across a center line attached to the origin to create my second end profile. Now we'll create our third profile in the center of the S shape on the right plane. Again, we want to ensure that the endpoints of the arc intersect the S shaped edges, so we'll set a Pierce relationship between those entities. And we'll add our dimension to constrain the sketch. Now we're ready to create our loft. Let's enter the lofted surface tool and begin selecting our profiles in order. I purposely created the end profiles on the same sketch to show how you can use multiple profiles from a single sketch, thus reducing some of the clutter on your history tree. Right click in the profile selection box and click selection manager. Here you can choose to select closed looped sketches or edges, open looped sketches or edges, a group of sketches or edges, or a region. Let's use the open loop option for this purpose and select one of the end profiles, followed by the center profile, and return to the selection manager to choose the other end profile. We now have a preview of the loft and we can select our guide curves. We could have created a few 3D sketches using the extruded S-shaped surface as a reference, but to save a few steps we can use the edges of the surfaces themselves as guide curves. Let's enter the selection manager again this time in the guide curve selection box. And we're going to select our first group of edges to act as a guide curve. Now let's repeat that process with the other side. And there is our completed loft. Let's hide this half of the extrusion and let's introduce the boundary surface tool to create the other half of the infinity symbol. Boundary is similar to loft though it gives some added control over start and end constraints as you'll see. We can use the edges from our existing loft as our end profiles, so we just need to sketch a center profile. We'll sketch this arc, again ensuring the endpoints pierce through the S-shape's edge, and we'll dimension it so the top of the arc lies beneath the existing arc surface, thus giving the illusion that the infinity overlaps itself. Enter the boundary surface tool and begin selecting the profiles in order. Again, we can use the Selection Manager to select our S-shape edges for guide curves. The nice thing about the Boundary tool is we have the ability to control how the ends of these two S-shaped surfaces will interact. In the Profile Selection box, select both of the end profiles and select the Curvature to Face option. As you'll see, the three-dimensional curvature of the lofted boundary will continue on to this boundary surface, so the interaction between the two parts will be nice and smooth. Now we can start trimming away the portions of the surfaces we don't need. Let's familiarize ourselves with the trim surface feature. Under Trim Type, you will see two options. The standard trim option allows you to pick a single surface to act as a trim tool, and any intersecting surfaces can be selected to keep or remove, depending on which option you choose. However, using the Mutual Trim type allows the user to select multiple surfaces and keep or remove any of the areas where the surfaces interact. So instead of using the standard trim option a dozen or more times, 
we can use the mutual trim option to combine our infinity and power symbols to the outer surface of the ring in one operation. Let's enter the trim surface tool, ensure the mutual trim type is selected, select all of the surfaces to be trimmed, and we'll click to remove the unwanted areas. Notice we started with six different surfaces, and this operation knits these surfaces into a single body after trimming. We can use this same operation to trim the unique angled side of the ring. Let's unhide the surfaces that we want to use for trimming. We'll enter the Trim Surface tool and repeat the operation using the Mutual Trim type. Notice as you click on the areas for removal, you're given a preview of the look of your new trimmed surfaces. Now all of these surfaces are knit into one body, but this body is still an open surface. Stay tuned for part 4 of this series for some best practices for converting open surfaces to a solid body.